Good evening and welcome to Some Thoughts On. The daily subject is Diablo 3. Uh, actually just the beta because I obviously haven't played the full game yet. But the reason why I'm making this is because Diablo 3 makes me kind of sad because it's really too much like Diablo 2 in my opinion. It's done a lot of things um, for the development but it's still core gameplay wise it's still just Diablo 2 in some fancy clothes it's very very linear and it depends almost entirely on the um, hit and run method you basically uh, let's say you just start on the left side you move over here and you kill monsters boom 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 and then you run into a really big angry guy and you you move and you attack him and you move and you move and you move until you're basically back at the start again and hopefully the bad guy is dead um, I have a few pros and cons for Diablo 3 right here and I've d divided them up into two groups. The top here is gameplay. Um, actually the core gameplay which has to do with fighting basically. And the bottom part is whoops, usability. Which has to do with everything else that is not fighting basically. So the biggest changes uh, are at the top here. So no potion spam because um, you only have one potion that you can use every 30 seconds, I think. And instead you pick up health orbs that spawn when you kill small enemies or when you do a certain percentage damage to bigger bosses and elite monsters. And instead, since you have no mana potions either, Mono regions is a much faster rate than it did in Diablo 2. And uh, there are no mono orbs or anything like that. But if you just wait for like 5 seconds, your entire mono orb will fill up. And you can cast all your spells again. Um, it also has a lot more spawning enemies, which are... Um, they make the game a lot more dynamic, given that you can't always say when you enter a room that this contains X number of enemies and it will just keep doing so because monsters will spawn out of enemy or yeah out of enemies out of windows out of the floor out of walls whatever a bit depending on what the level looks like but you will learn to identify the the spawning areas when you start playing the game a lot I've only played it for like 10 hours maybe and it's pretty easy to pick out the places where they can spawn, even though they might not. Um, for the cons, I have no weapon switch here, which um, it might just be in the beta, because you can't go into options and try and check your keyboard configuration or anything like that. So um, this may or may not be an option in the uh, in the game when it's released. I think it won't be given that uh, the game is made for consoles as well I think so they might not have the extra button available for it. And then there's only 4 plus 2 skills. The 2 here is your left and right mouse button and the 4 is the 1 and 4, 1 through 4 uh, buttons on your keyboard. You can't rebind those either. Um, when I played Diablo 2, I generally had like the left mouse button with the my primary attack, and then have all of the eight uh, slots with, that you had uh, hotkeys for on my right mouse button. Um, so basically, Q, W, E, R, and then one through four for the potion slots. So. The difference of um, two skills here on the hot bar is not it might but not, might not be such a big number, but the difference is in the 
the four slots over here, which are enough for cooldown instead of mana basically, because they don't cost a lot of mana, not for the sorcerer at least. Instead they're just based on cooldown entirely, which makes them usable only every once in a while, like the potions. So you have to be a bit more clever in your use of them, or you will just save them and not use them on the default monsters as well, which is what I do. On the usability side, uh, there is a lot more easier, more easier, nice English, um, easier crafting. You could do this in Diablo 2 as well, in the Roderick Cube, but this time the blacksmith had all the recipes and all the crafting so you just pay him to level up basically and then you can craft new items from old ones which break down into materials. There's also free respects so instead of having several several characters of each class you basically only need one and then you can respec him if you want to play differently. Um, these ones kind of stick together uh, there are no scrolls. You can identify things just by right clicking on them and uh, very epic and really extremely rare items you can take to Kane, I think. But given that you have no scrolls in your inventory, no potions, um, and all of the items are basically one slot, two slots, or four slots, I think, um, it's a lot easier to manage your inventory. There are no silly things like the halberds in Diablo 2, I think it was, that had you know four slots or spears that had eight slots. And then you carried around your Haradri cube and your tomes of identify and tele uh tam portal. And then maybe a few potions and then your inventory was full basically. So the inventory works a lot better in Diablo 3. Unfortunately there is no uh, dungeon selling or dungeon uh, disenchanting, which used to be in the beta, so I'm not sure if this is um, in the released game or not. It was really nice when you could do it, but I see the reason why they might not include it, because they basically want people to go into town and have the towns be a nice meeting place, because when you can sell things in dungeons, it's just pure gameplay all the time, which might be nice, but you might also need a break every once in a while. Um, I actually have a video here where I will demonstrate and talk about a few of the gameplay issues I've run into. Um, it might not be like bad design in the game since it's the number three. But I still don't like it. As you can see here, I'm fighting the Chancellor Emon. And basically what he does is he stands still, he teleports once, and he has one attack that does a fairly low amount, but still unavoidable damage. So, oops, I will move back a bit. Um, I'll just take the screenshot here, paste it. So what Eamon does is he stands here, I stand here, and I shoot him. That's it. I use my, this is Arcane Orb, and this is Magic Missile. So basically what I do is I use um, Arcane Orb until I run out of mana, and then Magic Missile. Repeat. And then he dies. So unavoidable damage is, in my opinion, one of the worst things in design. I have no idea why they use it at all. Sure, if it's ranged, he might use like a bigger target attack, but it's just unavoidable, which makes me kind of sad. Um, the second example is actually much better. Even though my gameplay got corrupted, um, I can only show you know a fifth or quarter of the skeleton cooking. But this is the last boss in the beta, so he obviously has a bit of development time on him. What you saw there in the first part was his blink attack. This is his second attack, where he swings around a lot. 
And then the third thing he does is he spawns a bunch of skeletons and teleports away. Uh, unfortunately, since he was so low on life, I can't show the entire fight, but I will. Again, take a screenshot and go in Photoshop after. I just shoot him again. Uh, the difference is this time I saved my AOE thingy for the smaller skeletons. And boom. Um, let's see. So, uh, attack number one is melee. Uh, he goes back and forth a bit. Uh, unfortunately, even when he starts a swing, you can't go around him and hit him in the back. Because he will just turn to face you. So this one is only dangerous for melee characters as well. Uh, number two is ranged. Uh, he does his blink thingy, boom, and then his wings. You can uh, you can actually dodge this entirely. If you just start running when he does his ghost thingy, uh, a ghost comes out of him, then you will take no damage at all. Uh, so this is uh, uh, actually avoidable damage, which is nice. Um, and number three, skeletons, boom. Uh, two times four of these guys. So this boss actually has a bit of strategy um, in that you have to move away from things and the skeletons become much easier if you just stand in the middle of them and let them come to you and then AOE them down. So uh, as well as save your AOE for them because otherwise you will just be out of mana. Um, so this one actually makes me a lot happier, because it has avoidable damage, it has movement, it has uh, maybe not so clever, but still a use of different skills. Even though I don't use my uh, number one skill here, which is Trust Nova. I don't think I do it. Maybe once. Um, this is... These guys are teleporting. Uh, teleporter, uh, which is one of the things I th think they could have done much better as well, because as you can see here, I'm just cutting them back towards the place where I'm coming, which is the strategy that you can use against every single type of monster in the game, um, and the, in my opinion, the biggest problem, because you, uh, there's never any reason to. Let's say these guys teleported away from you instead. Mm -hmm. You would have to choose between uh, trying to find another way around or uh, number one. Let's say they teleport away. Obviously, this would only work on ranged uh, enemies. And it would be a real big pain in the ass for melee characters, but let's let's run with it as an example. So, boom, 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 they spawn here, and when you get close to them, they teleport up here, or they teleport in different directions, which might be even more annoying. But it might also, let's say, there's also here's a pack of monsters, and here's a pack of monsters. So obviously this would make you run kill this guy first. Uh, give the blink a cooldown where you can actually run them down if you run them down once in a while. Uh, or not once in a while, but one at a time. So you run down here and you kill this guy. Maybe these have moved towards you because that's what monsters do. And then the range guy teleports over here and this guy teleports over here. I can't really erase because then you see the bottom layer. So then you go for that guy instead. I can paste it. So number one is they teleport away from you. Because right now, uh, if they're up here, they will always teleport and stand right next to you. Even if we're ranged. Um, the only point at which this is scary is if there's really big monsters, like boom, boom. 
like that, because then you're surrounded. And really big monsters actually do this, which is one of the only places where um, where you end up in a scary situation in the beta. Number two is frozen fast monsters, but I can talk about those later. Um, so let's say we have number two, melee. The uh, melee monsters, they're allowed to teleport to you because they're most sc scary in close situations. So in this case, you might want to use your frost nova, stop them there, move away, and then shoot them. And let's say once you kill one or one or two of the enemies, uh, the other guys teleport to you again. Boom, boom, and you. You're out of Frost Nova, so you have to kite them a bit. But that's still more interesting than just having everything, even the ranged ones, teleport to you. So ranged ones, teleport away. Melee ones, teleport to you. It's a really small fix, but it might also make the game a lot more dynamic, given that um, the different type of monsters de um, behave differently. So let's say you have a pack uh, because once you've created extremely simple patterns, just different ones for enemies, you can combine them in different ways to make um, more interesting encounters where the player has more options to use different skills, uh, use more clever movement. Instead of just having the monsters do more damage and have more health, you instead get more advanced patterns and combinations. So once you have like two big enemies and three small ranged ones and they're all teleporting and you're over here you have you know big ones here small ones boom 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 so you first and over these and you have to choose between killing the ranged ones first killing the slowed ones or just running away <laughs> yeah that became a dirty picture in my mind or whatever i'll just take a new one um once you've created those simple patterns and create different monster groups, you will have really an infinite number of combinations. Because, yeah, you have ranged teleporting, you have melee teleporting. But then you have these other modifiers, like, um, let's say we include a small, fast, frozen, or freezing, I don't remember which enemy. It runs up to you, and then it freezes you. And then they teleport to you. And then you're in all kinds of um, serious problems. So that means you have to be on the constant lookout for small enemies as well, as well as the teleporting ranged ones. So using only three different types of monsters, let's say we include a couple of packs of you know normal cannon fodder minions as well, you will really quickly um, have really an awesome number of combinations of situations you can end up in because the problem right now is that every situation is basically the same you come from this side you want to move over here so you keep doing baby steps and when you run into something you move back a bit you shoot it move back you shoot it and move back so then you start from here instead and then you just keep on doing this over and over because all the monsters will eventually run into a choke where you can use your AoE spells for most efficiency. Again, this is only from the beta. So I'm extrapolating quite heavily depending on what I've experienced. But um, the things in the video, not that one, are um, the very few examples where I could find actually good fights in the beta. So here's the uh, second to last one, I suppose. These are four pillars here. They each spawn a number of skeletons, maybe five or six. The reason why this is good design is because the monsters will block the pillars. So um, you have to keep moving. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, again, the monsters die so easily and they really don't do much damage so it's not an issue in the beta but it might be in the game on 
you know, higher difficulties. So you have to keep moving. You have to kill a few skeletons to be able to do damage to the pillars because the monsters will keep getting in your way. And you will have to wait for mana to recharge. As you can see, it recharges really fast. So you just kite them around for a bit. But instead of kiting back and forth or just moving to one side and killing the skeletons and then moving back up, you will actually have to move around the room. I will move back a bit. Move back a lot. Let's say we print screen here. Um, so the pillars are here. And if you move back, yeah, I'm drawing outside the screen. You will just have a ton of different skeletons in your way here. Sure, you will eventually get them into choke where you can AOE them down and then shoot the closest pillars and then move up a bit. But yeah, they really encourage you to be close to the action here instead of just moving back and forth. This is the last example in the video I have. This is John Dar. He's sort of a mini boss, not really important. But what's interesting, or what could have been interesting at least, is his poison nova. I will try to pause it when he does it. Boom. So the reason why this is interesting is because if you had a game where movement was extremely important, like the examples I said before, where monster packs were actually threatening and had a ton of different combinations, then reducing your movement options like this it would make the the player would have to make do with a lot less space so let's say these skeleton guys oops i can't draw with white on it let's say these guys are really scary they run up to you or something like that and explode after being dead for two seconds so they move towards you you kill them and then, boom. And then the other guy, maybe he's here, boom. So you have this limited space here to work with. And you still have to dodge things. Basically, not standing in fire is what made World of Warcraft raiding interesting. But they don't seem to have noticed much. Because if you take unavoidable damage, it's just... A gear check basically but when you have things that you need to avoid then it becomes a little more of a skill check anyway and moving and doing damage at the same time was basically the only challenge in World of Warcraft at least as long as I played it which was only up to Lich King uh, when he was released so I'm not an expert but yeah Standing in fire seemed to be hard enough for 25 people at a time. Uh, so this Poison Nova thingy could have made this fight really interesting. And on, uh, let's say it took a couple of seconds from, uh, maybe one second at least, from when he cast it to when it actually does damage. So melee characters would have a chance to get out of the way as well. And then let's say it stays up for... Uh, 10 seconds and then yeah maybe that's too long yeah it stays up for x number of seconds and after x plus 5 seconds he casts it again and meanwhile when there are skeletons up you can't do damage to him for instance then it becomes a boss fight that could have been in world of warcraft which is it might not be an excellent game but the boss fights in world of warcraft were in my opinion, really, in some cases, really interesting. Um, like, it had, even though it had bosses where the challenge was basically to find the best places where you could just stand and do DPS, it still had different designs for different monsters, which is something that I think Diablo is really lacking at this point. Because all the monsters, they spawn, boom. They move towards you and you kill them or they hit you. And that's it. Number one. Number two, ranged. Uh, they stand 
and they shoot you. Pew. A really big arrow. And that's basically it. There are uh, spell casting guys as well that just stand still and then spawn monsters. But yeah, after 10 years since Diablo 2, I just expected more. Let's say, for instance, I'll just do a new one. Let's say that movement is important, and in my opinion, forcing the player to move is one of the the I don't know what to call, but creating opportunities for the player to actually become good at the game. Um, because if you ha if you can stand still and get away with it. Nearly everyone will do that. So having to choose between, let's say this one moves a bit slower. So you can choose between having this area here, or you can choose between having this big area here. Let's say it's a split second decision. The better play will take the bigger area, obviously. And let's say you get a shot in over here. Then you might have no chance of surviving the skeletons. But that's just because you didn't take the two steps over here. So movement and maybe not forcing movement, but forcing. If you want to be in a safe position, you have to think ahead. You have to maybe know the boss fights uh, because dying in Diablo 3 is really not an issue. You will just respawn like up the stairs here and you, you can just try it again. So. If dying is not an issue, the th the bosses should have something where skill can come through because at the moment doing doing damage is really really easy. You will nearly never use the skill here. Sure, it's as I said, it's only the really beginning part of the game, but I'm still a bit worried that the latter parts of the game will keep using the same mechanics because that's what Diablo 2 did um, like even the latest monsters that came out in the expansion and the at the extreme last part of the game the monsters were still really simple in how they behaved and they always spawned in packs where the packs themselves were made up of one or two different type of monsters and they only spawn in groups of you know maybe 10 so all the fights were essentially the same throughout the game and the only interesting part was the loot they dropped basically because the only part where skill got involved was uh, evading some things like slow moving projectiles not getting too close to fire breathing types and not hitting the lightning enchanted ones. That was basically it. Instead, what I expected from Diablo 3 but didn't get was number one, player movement. movement. Uh, number two, uh, swapping skills easily and quickly. Because right now you can only set your skills and then you have to play with them. And if you run into a scary monster, you will have to town portal out and then come back with your new skill set facing that type of monster. So you can't really switch skills at all, which you could do in Diablo 2. So adapting with skills. And number three, adapting to different. Uh, enemy packs to enemies. Kiting is easy, you will learn it really quickly. But uh, I just wanted the game to have a higher skills skill cap, I suppose. Because right now it feels really shallow, and I, I'm afraid that I will uh, lose interest in it really quickly. I will still probably buy it, but I will not buy it uh, on a release date, which I actually thought of uh, to begin with. I had my pre-order booked, but I've actually removed it since. So I want to check the game out, um, hoping to find this 
in the later parts of the game. I'm just afraid that I won't.